Today I have something really um, special or really different lined up for you. So I get an incredible number of um, inquiries, emails, questions, letters, posts pe from people asking me more uh, questions for Danny, like specifically they are questions for him to answer and also people are asking me is the guy with the voice who does my uh, who's behind the scenes on my videos is that my husband is Danny my husband yes Danny is my husband yes he does uh, he takes care of all my technology and then some he does an incredible amount of stuff for me behind the scenes and he is just one of the most amazing guys amazing husband and so I thought today, um, with your permission, I would love to bring him on the show and you can ask him your questions directly. So I've even got my iPad here so that I can read the questions. So please, please, please start posting your questions now for Danny. I have a couple of questions for him which are which I have seen before I mean which I've taken from people who've submitted questions before to get it kick-started he is still behind the scenes setting this all up because he has to let it fly solo now as he comes and takes the seat here so I want to see in your posts I want to see you guys say Danny Danny because actually believe it or not he is a little bit on the shy side and he is um, he's he's an introvert and it it has taken a lot to bring him here in front of the cameras so I'm gonna see if I can set up my um, iPad so that I can see a little bit questions. on the shy side a little bit <laughs> It has taken so much to get you to agree to go on, to come on this show. So, ah, here we are. I can see the comments already. Thank you. Um, so, yes, please give me your comments. And now let's give a warm welcome to Danny, who I or affectionately known as Boo. Boo? <laughs> I'd love for you. You don't need to crawl under the camera to come here. Just walk. People have seen when you crawl under the camera that your head gets... Yes, but you see, this is completely blocking the view. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't seem to quite um, work, uh, you know, professionally speaking. It, 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 see, look, look oh at Oh my all. God, there's, there's people out there. Oh my God, how many people are there? There's... <laughs> What's that number? I can't read that number, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so oh funny. God. Look at all the hearts. Look at all the hearts. They're all for you. No, they're Everybody's... probably they're probably for you no. in sympathy. Oh my god, our heart goes out to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Isn't that what it means? It's like, uh -uh. oh my god, my heart goes out to you. Oh my god, you have to deal with that guy. So, no, they're all 24 for you. 24 years you, and you're still dealing with him. You, you, you have so many fans. It's unbelievable. Oh my god, we barely started and there's already 82 comments for you. Yes, uh, people like, are saying, change that shirt. Change no, that they're saying, thing. nice shirt. Yay, Danny. <laughs> Danny, come on out of your shy side. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, that's oh my, so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> People hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hi, Danny. Hi from France. <laughs> People love you. Oh, my gosh. So... My, my new show will be starting in three weeks' time where I will be doing my own show uh, <laughs> where I will probably get, like, two people tuning in you you one have of them, to be one of them will be me and the other one will be the the, the the moderators from facebook going like shut the show down the guy's so boring <laughs> if you're not careful everybody's going to hold you to it and say say they're waiting for your show oh look barry goldstein says danny my brother from another mother <laughs> oh barry how's it going man how's it going <laughs> oh everybody loves you look at that um <laughs> So, so anyway, some of the questions that, oh, okay, this lady here, Ju Judy, oh, Judy, she was at our 1440 event. I remember you, Judy. Um, Judy says, Danny, I can't believe that Danny is shy. He is so funny and sweet and nice. <laughs> and that is so true. People can't believe you're shy. Oh. So one of the questions that had come in previously um, was that, um, did, what were the differences you noticed in me before and after the near-death experience? Okay, all right. That's that's sort of a. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not particularly articulate, guys. So so bear with me while I mumble mindlessly, and hopefully it makes some kind of sense. But okay, the difference between before and after. Um, before before, 
when we first got married. Yeah. Right. You were like this dynamic go getter, you know, like when you know, we first met. When actually. we first met, yeah, yeah, you were like a dynamic go getter, uh, and then it was a, a case of having to now be a married, you know, woman, lady, um, you know, whatever the politically correct term is nowadays, um, and then having to conform to the guidelines set within the society uh, and the and the culture that we were um, living in and uh, and involved with um, on a on a day-to-day -day basis um, and you know society was fine but the culture was I think downright um, demoralizing uh, it was in in my opinion anyway it sets it sets you up to, to fa and this is the, the Indian culture, for, for those of you that are wondering what culture I'm talking about, this was back in Hong Kong, uh, the, it was the Indian culture, um, particularly uh, within the, uh, and if, I don't know if you know India at all, but India's got those multiple caste systems where people from one level aren't allowed to talk to another, um, which already is, in my opinion, um, What's a polite word for BS? <laughs> That's it. All right, you yeah. got it. <laughs> In my opinion, pure BS to, to go that way. But, um, you know, having to conform to the guidelines set within the, uh, the culture just slowly seemed to strip away at that young lady that I'd met and that I'd, uh, that, or, that I'd really married. And if you can imagine a bright, shiny you know, light, a, a bright, shiny star. Uh, and over a period of time, it just sort of went, you know, from like big, bright, you know, like, yay, you know, to like, mm, yeah, having to, having to, to, to dim one's light. Yeah, and, and it, and it I, I, I couldn't quite understand what it was that was driving that. But that basically took you to a point where, um, you know, you were, I don't know, just, you know, I guess that's when broken. I started to get yes. That's when I started to get sick. And, exactly, exactly. And it's just not a healthy way to to live. And then, you know, going into the and then the the, the cancer just continued to, to to strip away and erode whatever you know was was there. And you know, we'd try our best to 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 keep you perky and uh, you know try and cut you off from the. Um, from the community and from the, the from the from the, I from the community. I appreciate your efforts in doing that because I yeah thank you. Yeah, because and, I mean all, all of that was it just didn't work. It, it, all it did was just yeah. I mean it was it was sad you know just 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 watching. Uh, and, and then there's the um, the the there's the added thing of. You know, everybody saying like, so, you know, how are you doing? What's your prognosis? Um, you know. That made me even more fearful. Exactly. And shrank me even more. A, 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 exactly. Right? And, and our friends from, from our non-Indian friends were, I don't know, so much more, I don't know, open. I think, yeah. And it was, it was that community that we were in and just to exactly. just, just to interject before you get into like after the comparison after yeah. the nd was uh when we first met i was that um rebellious feisty person the cindy lauper yeah person, exactly the one who had run away from the marriage uh he loved that i had done that and he that's the person he loved but when we got engaged and got married um, I started to associate more with um, married people of my culture and was trying to fit in. And I was an anomaly amongst married couples, Indian married couples. Uh, we were an anomaly. The fact I've, that he, I've always yeah, been we've an always anomaly. Been. And so I was trying to fit in with all the norm, the yeah, the culture, the um, yeah. It was basically yeah. the peer group, you know, and how they expected yeah. uh, us to to be. And I felt I had to be the subservient woman. That yeah. And so it was interesting because that never came from Danny. That came from my peer group and my culture and my society, the society we move in. And uh, yeah, and that's when you started to I kept to saying see. to Anita, like, have a cigar. 
Yeah, he would. He, he's like the coolest <laughs> husband ever. But yeah, I mean, at, at that time, it was incredible that ah, he did actually... did you hear that? I it, was the coolest husband he still at, is. at that time. He still is. No, I mean, at that time, it was... We were... We, did I just we throw were, you under the bus? Yes, you did, but oh, that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm shy <laughs> and I'm nervous. So, <laughs> so we will allow you, Thank you to very throw much. me under the bus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just take a sip of my... Um, Coffee. It's just pure coffee. It's just pure coffee. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and so the, the comparison. So, so what they wanted to know was the comparison. And it's interesting because we've never shared this viewpoint before. And I never really thought of it that that way. But you've brought it up a couple of times because I tend to think also a lot of the fear and the cultural conditioning from my childhood contributed. But I did really go through this rebellious period um, of breaking away from my culture and not wanting that arranged marriage. And, you know, when I, yeah, I was, uh, and, 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 that, and was, that was when was, you fell that, in love with me. That was who I married. Yeah, and that was that who you was fell who in I love married. with. Yeah, and that exactly. is actually who I really am. Exactly. That's the real me. Because, exactly. So, yes. So do me a favor. Stop hanging around with the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> You're on. Stop hanging around with the wrong people. Right? Hang around with these folks. These yeah. folks are cool. Oh, these guys are really cool. <laughs> exactly. So, but the thing is now... When, when are we coming to your house? Like, uh, I like roast beef. <laughs> Anita likes roast cauliflower. Yeah. <laughs> and roast zucchini. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like a lot of things like that. That's do you like true. roast chicken? Uh, yeah, I do. And But I one of the favorite things that I've discovered, and I guess some people are going to say this is... This is going to gross them out. But it's the cauliflower-based pizzas. <laughs> I know. He likes the real deal. I actually like the cauliflower-based pizzas. Um, so, um, <laughs> you're so funny. Pepperoni, sausage, black olives, regular cheese. <laughs> and for those of you who know me that um, or know us, you know that we are opposite in so many ways, and yet we're alike in many other ways as well. That's funny, isn't it? Huh? What? That the opposites <laughs> attract? Yeah, but also we're, we have so many similarities. Like, we speak the same three languages. That's right. We have the same, to- we have the same choice of barber. <laughs> we have the same choice of... Um... I don't use your barber. <laughs> I have a hairdresser. Oh. But, okay. I was just trying to think of something to say. <laughs> um, and the second part of the question was that, was that so, so it was a comparison. What was I like before compared to after? Okay. I told you guys all about where she'd gone to before. Right? And you can see after, right? The, yeah, it, this is who I married, you know, like, you know, the, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the wise beep. <laughs> <laughs> wise guy. The wise guy, exactly, you know, like, you know, or like wise, you know, choose yeah. your own word there. Yeah, you're a wise guy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wisdom, you know, you can tell, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to divert energy into growing hair. But do you have more fun now? Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes, there's less time required in the shower to uh, wash and then blow dry my hair. No, and, do you have more fun in our relationship now? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. For a while there, I can tell you, it was really, really starting to get, like, boring. <laughs> yeah, while well, I thank was trying God to fit you, in. Thank God you didn't end up going to the temple four times a week or something. <laughs> I know. Right? And then lighting incense around the house and sitting there and doing... And so I'm, I'm trying to... I can see there are a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. And see, this is the problem. This is what happens when you're not behind the scenes. Yeah, I know. I know, so... You see, the thing is, in real life, you really need a producer to do these things. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. So, so we have to be both, the um, producer and the, and the um, you know... The... How many people? See, the numbers are dropping. There's only 320-something no. people. They're not dropping. So... We started off with 700 people. We did not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so... So anyway, while Anita's uh, being producer today and uh, and trying to uh, find the questions, um, I'll carry on a, a little bit about the uh, the post uh, NDE Anita. You know, when she came out of the um, the thing and we were in the in the hospital, uh, you know, she and uh, and she woke up and the and the first thing she said was like, "Hey, bring me an iPad, uh, an i 
iPod, iPod you I know, said with, iPod, yeah. with music, and I was thinking like, okay, all right, okay, you know, this is exactly the type of thing I would do in the hospital. You know, if I was lying in hospital, it's like, you know, it's, stop lying here being sick. You know, let's 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 try to, you know, make the situation, you know, pleasant for for everybody. Let's put a smile on everybody's face. You know, most especially my face, but you know, let's try and put a smile on everybody. You know, the nurses going past, you know, the doctors, you know, yeah. I don't know, this was ICU, maybe the patients in the in the next bed wouldn't want to, to smile, but you know, you give everybody their, their own space, but um, you know, my my core is just to try and try and laugh. Um so a question is like what do you think is the secret of a uh of a successful relationship, oh. in your opinion, from the guy's point of view. Uh, in, in my honest, honest, honest opinion, or jokey opinion? Well, uh, but, well yeah, honest, honest okay. opinion, I think. I don't know. I think the honest, honest, honest opinion is to make sure you marry your best friend. I mean, I, I remember we were, um, at, we were at a friend's wedding one day. And Anita was off, you know, talking to her friends. I'd, I'd gone off, you know, to the buffet, you know, where else? Uh, and I bumped into a really old friend of mine who I hadn't seen for years, and she was saying to me, so Danny, I heard you got married, you know, like how's married life? And I said, great, you know, I married my best friend. And she said, oh, does Anita feel the same way? And I said, yes, of course, you know, absolutely, you know, so you know, I, I, I think that's the, I think that's the secret, you know, marry your best friend, right? Make sure your best friend really is your best friend, right? Um, you know, go through a couple of years where you stop talking to your best friend and then you realize this is your best friend and just marry your best friend. I mean, most people, say, many people say their dog is their best friend, right? And they spent 14, 15 years with their dog, you know, and nothing ever happens. So you know, I think in the case of a relationship, marry your best friend. Yes, uh, that, and, and that's what I felt as well because we used to sp uh, spend hours talking on the phone like till two in the morning before you know, when we were dating and we just, we had so much to talk to each other about. So that was really, really interesting. See, look, I can't seem to get um, the comments coming up here because it's showing 278 comments. Every time I click on the comments, it goes into a full screen video. So um, isn't that interesting? Ah, there's, uh -huh. so then if we go that way. Um, so, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> See, that's why I need him. He's the tech guy. Um, Milena's watching us. Hi, Milena. And so we, and we got, um, let's see, they love that. The marry your best friend. Is there still flame in the romance? I think that's a question I saw because they disappear very fast. Uh-huh. You see, it's really hard reading is the there, question like this. It is. Is there still flame in the romance if it is a best friend? It's, I think so. I think it's so much more fun. I think that there's so much more. There's people who come up to us on the street randomly uh, and actually say to us, like, how long have you guys been married? We go like 23, 24 years. And they say, oh, my God, it's hilarious. It's, it's so cute. You guys still walk down the street holding hands. Right? And, and, and these come from random strangers, you know. Um, A lot of strangers say they think that we've only come together recently. Exactly. So that must be the flame they see, because I certainly feel there's a flame, but, yeah. but it, yeah, so yeah, definitely. I think so. Yeah. And, and I can't imagine being with anyone else except Danny. It's like, if I don't see him, I miss him. And there's no part of me that w desires to be with anyone else except Danny, so. Unless, of course, Macy's is on sale. Oh, yeah, that's different. Or if there's a shoe sale or a handbag sale. There you go, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden then, you know. <laughs> Everything like... pales into comparison. Exactly, yeah. a a exactly. But no. <laughs> and, with you, and with you, it would be like technology going on sale. Yeah, now that's an See, idea. See, you're like, Anita, Anita, who? <laughs> 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 and I also think it's really important to maintain a sense of humor, don't you? All I do is look in the mirror every morning and I can't but help laugh. Oh, stop it. Okay, so somebody <laughs> asked me the other week um, if they think that self-deprecating -de humor is a sign of lack of self-love or total self-love and acceptance so you can laugh at yourself. In your case, which, which one do you think it is? Oh my God. <laughs> 
yeah. What, what, what were the what were the two definitions? So is it like so when we put ourselves down? Right. Does that come from a lack of self love, or does it come from being so sure of yourself that you're okay to say these things about yourself? Okay, I'm going to alienate a whole bunch of people right now. Right by 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 what I'm about to answer, but I think the people who come up to to you and ask that type of question, or or the type of people who who come up to you and go like, "Don't be like that. Don't say that about yourself." Yeah, themselves are living in a point a, a, at a stage where they themselves have a low a, a, a low level of self esteem, right, and they project that upon themselves, right, when they come up and say that. Does do, do that make any yes, sense? Yes. So what you're trying to say is that the reason they think that it's it comes from low self-esteem is because that's the way they are themselves. Exactly. Which means that there are people who self-deprecate because they have low self-esteem. Absolutely. Yeah. My feeling I... is that sometimes people who have low self-esteem will self-deprecate. I think I have the word right. Yeah, but will I think, do but that I think it's because important. no, but they'll do it because. They want to do it before anyone else does. Do you know what I mean? Like they know someone else is going to judge them or criticize them, or they believe someone else is going to criticize them. So they want to do it first, so that it's it's almost like to mitigate the hurt of hearing it from someone else. Um, and but at the same time, I also believe that people who are very confident. Have no problem in laughing at themselves. Now, I really believe now, that. Now, now, I think here's a really interesting example, right? And for the those two of you that are watching from Hong Kong that speak Cantonese, now, it, for many years, you know, we I mean, we lived in Hong Kong, and if you were to describe me to oh, somebody, funny. you know, it's like, okay, go and meet Danny at the corner of you know Kings Road and. Whatever you know, the, the the second street off of off of King's Road or Queen's Road in 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 Hong Kong. I was like, okay, right. So how do I recognize Danny, right? And the simplest way in 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 the Cantonese language to refer to me would be a Gong Tao Fei Lo, you know, which sums up, you know, in in, in very very succinct practical terms, you know, what does a guy look like? Right. Now, you, it, so in Cantonese, it's like, well, okay, all right, fine, you know, all right, I, I understand, you know, uh, or gong gong hao se an fei lo. Yeah. Right? So you, yeah, you. Right. So when you translate that, it's like the short, fat, bald guy with glasses. Now, you know, in 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 English, it is so insulting to say like, yeah, go to the. There'll be a there'll be a short, fat, bald guy with glasses. It's like, oh my. God, you know, like how can you refer to that? But you know, is that self-deprecating? No, yeah. and that's just uh, like in. You know, and I'm happy to say, like, yeah, fine, I'm the short, fat, bald guy. Yeah, like, okay, I'll see you at the corner. Hey, Uber driver. Okay, yeah, come and pick me up. I'm standing outside the bank. I'm the short, fat, bald guy. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> but in actuality, you're not even fat. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but 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 yes. By Hong Kong standards. <laughs> Everybody's a svelte size one over there. Yeah, it's true, uh, and it's true, and it is true that in in Chinese that's how people would describe you. And, Absolutely. And the first time I heard it, I was like, <clears throat> and Danny was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> and that's that's what I used to really like about you. I really like that that nothing would affect you. You never felt insulted or yeah. hurt, and I loved that because I yeah. was the other way. I was super sensitive to all these. You know, things. if there's a level of truth there. Then just stand up and go like, okay, yeah, it's true. You know, it's a fact. Why would I hide from the fact? Because the thing about you is that you're very, very authentic, and that's one of the reasons why I feel that I was meant to marry you. Because、um, if I had had the near death experience, and then you know what I realized on the other side was that I had not been. Authentic in that I had not been myself and honored who I am. I'd been afraid to be myself. I was always afraid to be judged, and that's why I was always trying to fit in, and I was afraid of disappointing people,、um, and that's why I bent myself out of shape like a pretzel. Now, if I was married to somebody who also expected me to meet 
certain criteria demands of the culture and expected me to fit this mold and be the stay-at-home wife who cooked whose focus was to cook and clean and take care of the house and do the laundry and you know if that had to be the main focus and all that if I had a spouse like that it would have been so much harder to come back you think so <laughs> yes yeah, so um so it is interesting because I really did feel on the other side that we were meant to be together and that our Although, our oh, purpose was linked. Yeah, I thought that right from the right from the get go, right from the first time we met. Yeah, it's true that there was that recognition. Indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really interesting. And then um, one person oh my God, question is that, I, is that what I look like? Yes, fortunately, yes, you do. And one person said, "What if somebody says?" like somebody she's interested in yeah. actually says that that you are you are my friend but in in a sense like they don't want to they don't want to have a romantic um they see it as two different things so she's trying to have a romantic relationship with this person because they're so close as friends and he's like no but i just see you as a friend right then there's then there's no magic there yeah we had magic we have magic yeah we had have yeah. if there's if there's no magic there walk walk away i mean remain remain friends you know by by all means you know and just let it take its 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 natural course i was reading something in the i don't know in one of the newsletter things that I, that i get about um i i think it was some famous singer here in the united states who ended up marrying his best friend of of 18 years because after a while they suddenly decided hey you know what you know this is going to work yeah you know they'd gone their separate ways you know after after college and you know kept meeting up you know you know they lived in the same city for a while you know and wandered off and you know stayed in touch as best friends you know and eventually one day they just got married that's really interesting and uh because that was one of the things i was actually going to say is that if you don't have a friendship then when that um you know when that excitement that that flaming romance when that fades then there's nothing to hold you together in fact that flaming romance stays longer and keeps and it evolves it changes it's of course it's different from the early days when you first meet but it doesn't weaken it just evolves into something else that was why i was um i was trying to think of how to answer that question because if you ask me if our love has got less i uh, or over the years or if, you know how things have changed i would say on the contrary to me the way i feel today is that that initial flame feels shallow compared to what i feel today that's why that's why i was uh, having trouble answering it because i was thinking about it and i thought wait a minute we've even gone beyond that and we've created something bigger and better together energetically it feels something so much bigger and i think that um there needs to be this deep relationship and a deep knowing that you've got each other's back and you're there for each other there needs to be that um uh as a as a as a foundation which is what holds it together it's the flame in fact is something that gets in the way and clouds your view of who the what the person is really like yeah, at some that... point you're going to have to sit down and be able to have an intellectual conversation with your partner and yeah. you have to enjoy each other's company yeah exactly you really do you you need to enjoy each other's company and you need to um be able to spend time together and um and although we we love doing our own thing as well we absolutely love doing our own thing and we can spend hours apart and be completely secure and knowing that um you know i know i know that uh, that he's that that he's there when i need him and he knows i'm there when he needs him so there has to be that security of being okay of being apart as well so i love that exactly so that's been great let me just see if there's any more questions there were a lot of questions mm -hmm. but uh someone says can't wait to read your new book thank you oh here my best friend and someone says something about my best friend in hong kong and married him she says i met my best friend in hong kong married him going to celebrate our 20th anniversary yay. oh yay great sheila sealer oh great thank you um 
Maria Dohai. Hi, Maria. I know who you are. Um, transforming together. Yes. And then uh, Gail says... Um, see, it's so hard to read in this background, yeah, isn't it? It is. A best friend for my yeah. I want uh, I want to manifest a best friend for my future partner. Yes. Do you think that the two of you were partners in another lifetime? I certainly think I so. I think we were. You said you recognized me from the time we first met. Absolutely. And I was in my like really rebellious stage of I'm not going to marry an Indian man. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I most certainly wouldn't either, and I wouldn't recommend you do. Oh, there's so many Indian people there. We are Indian people ethnically. <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble? Probably, but yeah. that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. I, I love everybody who's out there. Who... <laughs> I get a ton of letters from beautiful Indian people who talk to me about their issues. Exactly, um, because they're trying to break away from that mindset. Yes, it is a difficult mindset. It's a very difficult but, mindset. But you know what? As I share my story, mm -hmm. I realize it's not just an Indian story. It's a lot of cultures. Really? I've spoken to Persian people who said they grew up the same way. They said, wow. I relate to you. I've, I've spoken to Chinese people, Singaporean people, Arab people, Middle Eastern people, and they say, I relate to your culture and your background. I, I had to go through the same thing. It's not just us. It's just that we are now becoming a more global community. Like if you think about it, um, we were multicultural, right? We spoke multiple languages. We didn't grow up in India. We weren't, um, we were exposed to Western culture, Chinese culture, all kinds of cultures. And so we were able to pick and choose. But then when our parents expected us to conform to the culture they came from, that's where the trouble started. Yes, exactly. And so a lot of people go through that. Yeah, I think migrants, I, yeah. third culture people. Yeah, I think. I think it's all about trying to become more accommodating to, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? For, for everybody to be more accommodating for everybody. Yeah. Without trying to, you know, holding on to, I think, holding on to, on to heritage, right, is one thing, right? But forcing people into some level of conforming. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if people naturally fall into, 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 into that mindset, I think that's fine. Yeah. But I think that trying to force people to to conform to fall into a mindset that just doesn't resonate with them is yeah. actually doing more harm to people than anything else. That's absolutely true. And the thing is, we also have to realize um, nowadays more than ever because of the internet that everybody is a global citizen. Yes, exactly. We cannot be, um, what's the word for it, like myopic, xenophobic. We, we are global citizens and, and we uh, have to open up to every culture. We really do. And the funny thing is we were, that, we were forced to be that way even before the internet because our parents lived in a country that was not our own. Absolutely. So this would apply to uh, yeah, we migrants. Came, and, yes, yeah. we, we came from... Uh, Indian Indian heritage Indian heritage living in a hybrid culture of uh, Chinese and British uh, our friends came from all four corners of the planets uh, uh, of the of the of the of planet the, of the planet Pla <laughs> planet all four corners of the planet yeah uh, and then ultimately when we uh, when we left that and went off to uh, work we were also working in in multicultural in, exactly, corporations, yeah. exactly, and in industries that required us to travel the world uh, and and so, to and to integrate with people from every part of the planet. So here's an interesting thing I want to just tell the audience about us. So, both of us, um, our grandparents left India um, during the partition, which is you know like a like what is it like a cultural revolution type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so our yeah. parents, our grandparents, sorry, left India in 1947. Danny and I have not never lived in India, but here's the interesting thing I want to tell you is that both of us grew up in Hong Kong. Both sets of our parents come from the same part of India. Both sets of our grandparents comes from the same part of India 
that was affected during the partition that had to leave. And both of us grew up in Hong Kong. Both of us speak the same three languages. We, both of us went to British schools, different British schools, so we didn't know each other as we were growing up. But both of us grew up speaking Cantonese, English, and our parents' Indian dialect simultaneously. And both our parents, because they're from the same part of India, they speak the same Indian dialect, even though there's tons of Indian dialects. And then the first time that he met me in Hong Kong, in a, in a restaurant, um, and he met me through another friend, he, it was as, he said it was as though he recognized me, as though he knew me from another lifetime. So isn't that interesting, though, how our backgrounds are just so matched? Like, mm. how random. And what a coincidence. I know. <laughs> oh, God, what a coincidence, all that. You know, what are the chances of that actually happening? <laughs> no, coinc pure coincidence. We planned it that way. <laughs> it's a coincidence. <laughs> it is. Totally. Co totally. Totally. And, and then... Oh, this love from Denmark. See, there's people from all over the world, and that's what I love. And uh, so more than ever now, we are becoming global citizens. Exactly. Sarah, I wish you both would come and spend some time in Australia and experience our culture. I would love that. Oh, my God, I love Australia. I really love Australia. Um, I, I love um, all the traveling all over the world. I love getting to know other cultures. I love getting to know other people. I speak Australian. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. Good eye. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> How was that? That was pretty good. Yeah, I'm probably going to now get a little message from the Australian uh, Minister of Culture going like, that's... That's not how that's, we do that's it. That's not how we do it here. <laughs> <laughs> that's Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's funny. That's how most people know <laughs> Australia, at least back then. How did you recognize each other like the right person? That's a question here. Um, and someone else says, oh, you never grew up in India. It is a coincidence. Um, it's a coincidence that two Indians meet, meet each other in a country other than India. Yeah, it's, uh, and, you know, we grew up in the same country and our grandparents are from the same province, city of India. That's what's really interesting. Come to South Africa, love from Denmark. How about Austria? Oh, that's so beautiful. And having said that, um, about India, my mom has gone back to live in India because as she got older, she felt that she could be cared for over there. And for her, that's still her native language. So I go back and visit India frequently. And we do love to visit now, though, don't we? Because we are now away from having growing up in that culture of being in a separate culture. So now it's always fun. So, so, um, did you want to just take a crack at that question? Like, how did you know that? Oh, how did you recognize me? Or what was it you felt? I think if I had to actually pinpoint it, there was nothing visual. It was purely a... I think it would, I would have to, if I tried to articulate it, um, I'd have to say it was some kind of energetic recognition. You know how when... And I'm guessing that many of you have experienced this. You know, you're at a, I don't know, you're in the middle of a, a ballroom somewhere or a cocktail party or whatever. You're in the middle of the room. There's like 100, 200, 300, 400 people around. But somebody walks in the room and you can just tell by their energy that they're in the room and you actually turn around to look. Well, it was exactly that type of feeling. You know, it was just, I was, there was just that, recognition, you know, at the, yeah, there was just that record, <laughs> sorry, you're I'm so cute. It's right. very cute. <laughs> yeah, they tell me on TV, you know, you're not supposed to do that type of thing, you know, um, that confuses the cameras. But, you know, energetically, there was just that level of, of recognition. There was just that, like, you know, that <gasps> breathtaking type of thing. <laughs> um, oh. So uh, that, well, that was, See? that was my... That was my recognition. That's that's how it was for me. It just felt, huh, okay, comfortable, really, really comfortable. See, that makes my heart sing. Thank you. 
Sing or sink? Sing. Oh my God. Sing. I have, a, I, I have, a, I have a hearing impediment. <laughs> no, you know, it makes my heart sink. Thank you that, that you felt my energy in the room. Oh, absolutely. Oh, nice. Absolutely. I love that. I told you this before. I know, but you know, it's nice oh, sorry, to be this reminded. Oh, sorry, for television. No, it's nice to be reminded. You haven't told me in a long time. Oh, it was your energy, darling. I just felt it. And, you know, it was like, uh. <laughs> so, um, any last words before we wrap up? <laughs> oh, um, I don't know how to wrap up a show. I'm going to leave you to wrap up the show. <laughs> you know, somebody's going to have to go there and push the button. I, that's true, actually. Can I push it from here, or I, does that not do it? I don't know. We can try. Okay. We can certainly try. <laughs> you right. probably have to get up and push the button. If that button So we have work. never done this before, where we have nobody behind the scenes, the camera's rolling, he usually starts it from behind the camera, and so anyway, we've never done this before. So I really appreciate you guys' as a, a patience. We just wanted to do this for fun. It was an experiment. It was just for fun. It was just to come and have some laughs um, with you guys so you can see how, I guess this is how we always interact, right? <laughs> <laughs> Except what we haven't done is the funny accents. Oh God, yeah, we do do a lot of accents. Yeah, we'll have to do the funny accents next time. Yeah, right, I know. We're, we're we're coming up to. Oh my God, we've overrun already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do do accents for fun. We do them for fun when we're yeah goofing around. So yeah. So um, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Um, and uh, I would love to see you guys at one of my events or, um, or subscribe to my stuff, you know, whatever, the usual stuff. That's not the way to do it. Oh, okay, teach me. <clears throat> if you've enjoyed this video, remember to tune in next Sunday, same time, same place, right here on Facebook, where you will see Anita, without me, doing a much, much better show. You can also catch a rerun of this show on Facebook. You can catch a rerun of this show on YouTube on Anita's channel. That's anitamorjani.com forward slash YouTube. The video will be on from Wednesdays onwards. You can also resubscribe to Anita's newsletter where you'll see Anita without me, and it'll be a much more interesting thing. <laughs> and you're the shy one. <laughs> That yeah, was yeah. really good. Really? You have a good radio voice. Thank you very That's much. That's what everyone They've says. They've told me I have the perfect face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is where I have to say goodbye because I'm dropping your ratings. No. <laughs> no, you're not. But uh, thanks, thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for bearing with us. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Now, if I press stop here, bear with me in case we don't go off air. Nope, didn't work. I think it might have worked. <laughs> no? Nope, oh we're God. still on air. Oh. See, I'm still waving. We're still on air. Oh. You might have to get up and I might have to up. get up and yeah. everything. Okay, yeah. bye everybody for real. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody's laughing at us now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you can press the button. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to my video. And if you really enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe. And the subscribe button is here. And also I would love for you to watch my suggested video, which is over here. And if you love my content, please feel free to share it to people who you think that would benefit from it. Thank you.